guest from Shutterstock, we have Chief Technology Officer Sahal Amin and Senior Director of AI and Data Science. They're definitely in the right place. Alessandra Sala, up you come. Have fun. It's a pleasure to meet you all today. Um, I'm Sage Lamine, Chief Technology Officer at Shutterstock, and I'm so happy to be standing here presenting alongside my friend and colleague, Dr. Alessandra Sala, for this super important conversation we're about to have today. So if you know anything about Shutterstock, then you know we're on a mission to bridge the gap between idea, design, and execution. And when I think about that, and I think about utilizing AI for good, I equate that concept to ensuring a successful, ethical, and responsible future for AI and its integration into our lives. And that's our pitch to you today. Yes, we believe that combining creativity and AI will lead us towards a prosperous future, and that to get there, we must put the proper systems, policies, procedures, and principles in place to ensure both access and protection of those who contribute and benefit from this technology. So look, before we dive into those principles, I'd like to share a little bit about our organization and why we're even having this conversation with you today. Shutterstock as a business emerged 20 years ago when we started building a customer-focused delivery platform and a massive, massive global network of contributors. Shutterstock has since then evolved into the world's largest marketplace, content marketplace, delivering images, video, music, 3D, production capabilities, and data. And over the past five years, we've also been innovating and investing in AI capabilities in various ways to improve our customer experience. Most recently, we've moved towards advanced implementation of generative technology. But obviously, as we all know, this requires careful consideration because of the profound impact of this technology in our lives and, and generally in society. And today, we're here to provide you our perspective on building an ecosystem responsibly. And with that, we hope to inspire you, all of you, to participate in ensuring an equitable future that empowers and protects users, contributors, communities, and businesses. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Sala, who is going to set up our case for change. Thank you, Sajil. And hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Besides all my business title, I'm a researcher. So today, I'd like to share a few insights of how we develop AI system. I think all of you here agree that we are in a new era of AI. And yes, I'm talking about generative AI. Those models that have the capability, like Falcon, to create completely new, different piece of content. Today on stage, we'll show, as an example, our own AI image generation. But before we dive into what we have done, let's start to talk about the status quo and from where we had to build on. Generative models are built on a completely new engine. Researchers have started to work on those transformer models a few years ago, which are just complex way to learn from very large data set. And data is the point. Those models and this new era of AI has moved us further in the scale of using massive data set. Only a few years ago, we were using only a few thousand of images to train our model. Today, 400 million, few billion. And what's the problem? This new AI has moved us even farther in the scale of this massive data set. And therefore, 
when we think about which are the legal implication, which are the wrong question and ethical consequences of those models, data set that are grabbed from internet, what is called uncontrolled crawling, few days ago, June 28, a new lawsuit, they are full of biases, discrimination, stereotypes. And unfortunately, those data are so big that it's very difficult to moderate them for safety, non-violent content. A few years ago, I don't know if you remember, 2018, Dr. Bulanvini discovered that face recognition technology was discriminating against black people. Oh, Wale, we solved that problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Fast forward, image generation technology, same issue, same biases, same stereotypes. So in order to build AI safely and ethically, we need data set that needs to be curated, audited, human reviewed for safety, intellectual property, and copyright infringement. Massive scale data set are difficult to audit. It's expensive, it's time consuming, I know. But, but what if there was a world we're a different approach. And Marcus Gary were referring to it this morning. We could build different model with smaller data set, maybe easier to control. Let me share with you just one experience. I'm just back from this largest computer vision conference, computer vision and pattern recognition. 10,000 people attending. 2,300 new paper published only this year. I was telling Sejal, I came back <laughs> overwhelmed yeah. with all those information. An entire community working on the same set of problem. Big data, big model. A new conversation is now emerging. Challenging this community to look at different approach, and possibly with smaller data, easier to control. We believe that our business problem can be solved with a different approach. Um, Gary this morning was calling it safer, more robust, and possibly more efficient. And uh, summarizing, data set, need to represent humanity fairly. That's why we are here today, uh, being including and mitigating bias. And yes, I know it's expensive. Shutterstock has made significant process to ensure that we invest in the highest standard with three principles that everyone can use. Source data with diversity. We use our two million network of contributors. We fund those from marginalized community that otherwise could not express their diverse lives. We moderate data for bias and we build auditing tools to actually test our data and our model. It's not just the right way to do it. It's the only way to ensure that AI is a positive force for our industry, for our society, and our world. But now, Sage, let's jump to show some example mm -hmm. on those AI image generated from our model. Can you help me to recognize which is the one AI generated? The first boy? or the second boy. Please vote with me, I see some men, thank you. Another example, those are my favorite, nature. First one or second one, which is the AI generated image. I see people going a little bit bold. Yes. <laughs> and the third one, last example, a beautiful flower and an oil painting. Is it the first one or the second one? Sejal, how did we do? Well, they did it right. Pretty powerful, <laughs> right? What did you all think? 
So well done to anyone who picked any of these images. You're all right. These images were created by Shutterstock's AI image generator. These are completely new works of content. Um, they are not edited versions of existing images. And you can see it's pretty powerful across genres, photography, stylized art, and landscapes. And so whatever you can prompt, the generator can create. We love to call this creativity at the speed of your imagination. You, can also, you also know that this technology is getting better and better by the day, by the minute. So you can imagine how difficult it is, how difficult it will be for a human to tell the difference between an AI-generated image from traditional photography, paintings, or from graphic design. So our challenge, which we want all of you to go after with us, is to build a framework that unleashes the potential of this technology in ways that is safe and respectful of rights. We've anchored our thinking in the following question. How do we build a technology that is equitable for all? It is critical that we are representing humanity fairly, being inclusive, and mitigating biases while this technology evolves and enters our life in different ways. So I'm going to talk about three things here. It starts with our approach and these three key concepts. First is artist protection. We embrace technology to inspire creativity with artists at the center of everything we do, continuing the journey that we started 20 years ago. Second is shaping the business model of shared success where we are all the winners. Generative AI generates wealth for contributors. It creates art for users. And it provides strong pathways to growth for enterprises. And third, and, and not least, is transparency. Embracing a secure framework that certifies the provenance and authenticity of content, whether it is AI generated or artist created. So with that, let's dive into these three aspects and unpack our thinking. Let's start with the first pillar, putting artists at the core. If you think about this, artists, um, the artist community is divided on views on how AI is challenging the livelihood of artists, their work, and the future. On one side, we have examples of a group of artists who are initiating a first of its class copyright infringement suit over companies using copyrighted images to train AI models. On the other side, we have artists who are embracing AI to inspire creativity. And so, Ali, I would love if you could introduce our artist. Let me introduce Jerome Valdemos, the Shutterstock friend. We work with him on few events. He is a Dutch artist who has used data algorithm and AI for more than 10 years. His art has been covered in major publishers around the world, exhibition, museum, and his focus is on using AI to deepen our relationship with our natural surrounding. Here we have some example of his imagination of the future Stuttgart. And the point is, there are many artists, like the one that we have on stage during those two days, that love to use AI to push their limit of creation and imagination. But we don't stop at artists. What if those creativity tools are for everyone? AI can democratize creativity expression beyond creative expert operation that before we're taking hours in professional editing tool can now be done with some simple prompting and few seconds of processing. Here we have an example of our own create editing tool. And it's a creativity tool that is very easy to use, requires no trainings, and we hope it inspires everyone who wants to tell a creative story. So, Sage, let me pass it back to you sure. for this amazing and pioneering new business model. So, our second pillar redefines our current business model practices. Putting artists at the core is essential to building the future. Um, and the next critical element is to reimagine re the business model that is art and AI. If you think about it, today's AI economy 
is not yet broadly recognizing or supporting the, contributes, the contributing artists who are enabling it. Um, unregulated crawling and scraping of content to build generative AI models is not a practice we support, and we must determine a consistent approach towards compensating those who are contributing to this technology success. So imagine a world where every time an AI system generated an image that is sold, it is revenue shared with all the artists that contributed to the model. We're at the forefront of pioneering a new business model, one that distributes wealth and celebrates shared success for everyone who participates in the ecosystem. This will create a healthy and fairly source cycle of content because AI models are here to stay. So while we're here talking about artists today, it could be anyone who created content beyond images. This type of business model could be applicable in so many contexts that awards um, creators for their contribution. It could be playwrights, writers, authors, or producers. Um, really, this is about anyone and all the various types of content creators. And the revenue generated goes back to the creators fueling this new economy. Creators, designers, artists, and photographers are all creative and deserve to be compensated for their talent and their work. And if you came to our session yesterday where um, we announced the art contest, you will have heard about these two things, um, but I'm going to call them out again. So we've done two things. Um, we first launched the Contributor Fund to compensate those artists whose work is used to train AI models. This fund accumulates shared revenue and distributes the wealth back to contributors in perpetuity. I expect the model will continue to evolve for these unique contributions to generated images. And second, we've launched the Create Fund to provide historically excluded artists with financial and professional support to close access gaps, close content gaps, and further diversity and inclusion in our content library, in our contributor ecosystem, and across generative AI training models. So with that, I'm going to hand it back to Ali, who's going to talk about authenticity. Yes, indeed, Sejal. Our third pillar of our framework is transparency and providing human an opportunity to see what's AI generated versus authentic artistic creation. So human have no natural defenses against misinformation in the digital realm. It took me three trials for real to guess which one was the real one, by the way, bottom right. <laughs> um, and therefore, it's our responsibility to take decisive step to safeguard the consumption of this new class of content to make it safe for humanity. So we join the Content Authenticity Initiative, which is a global coalition with all the main stakeholders in the creative industry and the standardization body behind it, the C2PR, the Content Coalition for Provenance and Authenticity, to provide precise information to our user, to the consumer, of what's authentic and the provenance of the content. How many of you have seen Rihanna at the Super Bowl? Didn't, yeah, we love to see those authentic moments. We want to know what happened in the real life. Through the Content Authenticity Initiative and the standardization work, we can now attach a certificate that says it was taken from this amazing photographer that was at the Super Bowl at the time and that location and certified authenticity of that content. It's a trust model that recognizes and acknowledges the authorship of a piece of media. And by the way, we, we will attach those certificates to every AI-generated image from our AI generation model. So, the Congress, the Senate, the regulatory bodies in US and in the world, in Europe, here, they are all debating the potential and the dangers of AI technology as those products that are brought to market are opening up question on the creative industry, distinguish reality from fact, 
So current open source model, not all of them, but generally they are using unlicensed data, which unfortunately is a practice that we don't share, generate content that violate copyright, and it doesn't conform to the expected right and uh, commercial use in project. So at Shutterstock, we are proud to announce that we have been the first to, to create a model with the licensed images that recognize contributors, as Sergio said, and indeed bring back to the community uh, an opportunity to actually build on top. We have launched even an indemnity protection already shared with few customers, but rolling out with everyone now. And with that, I'll, leave it, I'll bring it back to Sejil for her final remarks. Awesome, all right, so let's bring it home. So look, we're in the early days, but at Shutterstock, we've developed this framework for making AI and art future a reality. The good news is that all of you in this room are the ones who can help enable these changes and make AI a safe technology that respects human rights. And look, it all starts with bringing humans to the core of this journey um, anchored in values. So to wrap this up, I want to remind you of the three-pillar approach that we just talked about. First, we begin, we begin with artist protection by bringing artists to the center of everything we do. Second, the business model. Generative AI generates revenue for contributors, it brings art to users, and it provides strong pathways to growth for enterprises. And last is transparency, embracing a secure framework that certifies the provenance and authenticity of data, whether it be artist-generated or AI-generated. So what, look, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Thank you. And as we wrap up, we're challenging you, all of you in this room, to put creators at the center of your operations and build a business model that responsibly rewards all participants. Thank and, you. And when we do these things, we'll create a more equitable world through the transformative fusion of AI and art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.